Welcome to Hall Pass, the television series that gets middle and high schoolers ready for life. Today we're talking about public speaking and communicating with confidence. Are you afraid to speak in front of a group? You're not the only one. And did you know that the way you speak is your key to success? Then you don't want to miss this episode of Hall Pass, your ticket to life. I'm Jazz, your Hall Pass host. Remember the last time you had to make a presentation in front of a group? How did it make you feel? Scared? Tongue-tied? Truth is, lots of people hate public speaking, and some experts call it the number one fear. But it doesn't have to be that way. Let's take a look at how to communicate with confidence. The way we speak says a lot about us, not only the way we are educated, but what we feel about ourselves and how we feel about speaking to other people. The way we speak says that we have confidence. The way we speak says we lack confidence. The way we speak says we are educated or we lack the communication skills or the education necessary to project ourselves in public. How can we best project ourselves in public? Voice projection is important to me because it gives the audience a chance to understand and enjoy the dialogue without them having to put strain on themselves to try and understand what you're saying. I believe that when you're speaking you should be able to change the vocabulary you use because if you continue using the same words over and over again it gets repetitive and it doesn't emphasize the importance of what you're saying as much. Mumbling is a problem because sometimes when you mumble well, all the time when you mumble, they, no one can understand what you're saying. So if no one can understand what you're saying, then why are you even talking? Like, If you speak too fast, it might turn into a mumble. And uh, if you speak too slow, it might cause boredom. People will not be as interested in you. What about filler and crutch words? Um, uh, and like. There's uh, like, well... You know, um, you know is one I think too. So where are we picking up all these bad habits? Experts say it could be our role models. Whether they be hip hop, music industry, television stars, movie stars, all of these people influence the young people today. Television stars? Hey, that's me. Hopefully I'm having a positive impact on you though. You know, bad influences are hard to undo as we grow into adults. Some people don't understand what you're saying, and you lose a lot of the professionalism that you want to portray, especially as you get older and enter the business and professional world that you're going to be living in. Mr. Esposito should know. He trains for the organization Toastmasters International. What's this you say? Dr. Ralph Smedley in California started an organization in the basement of a YMCA for traveling salesmen to perfect their presentations. And from there, it's mushroomed into an organization today that's in every country in the world, every major city, and it is known as the largest unknown organization of its kind in the world. Dr. Snedley was born in 1878, so Toastmasters has been around a long time. Today, they have junior Toastmasters that visit their meetings and youth leadership programs to help students learn how to communicate with confidence. It is an eight-week course that allows the students to act as Toastmasters, run their own meetings, elect officers, give speeches, do impromptus, and do evaluations. At all times, there's an experienced Toastmaster there to help guide you and to encourage you to perfect the communication skills that we're trying to give to you. And that's why we're here today. Not only to help you communicate your thoughts and ideas clearly and in a way that makes people want to listen, but also to help you become a better public speaker, whether it's in front of a crowd of 10 or 10,000. I think that people fear public speaking because when one is up in front of a crowd of people, they feel very vulnerable and that everyone's looking at them and, and can be judging them and 
they are always wondering, oh, I wonder if my hair looks okay, I wonder if they think um, my speech is boring, or something like that, and so they're very concerned about what people are thinking of them. I am very scared about public speaking, actually. Um, like many, you know, it's the biggest fear among people, so, it, you know, it gets to me. Yeah, I don't mind it, because I'm used to being in front of a big audience, or like friends, and so I'm pretty used to it. I don't have a problem with it. I think most people fear public speaking because they don't realize that they're not the only ones, that everybody feels that way, and that we actually can harness that energy, that weird feeling in our stomach, and put it into the story or into the public speaking. Up next, we'll show you how to overcome some of the common speaking mistakes we mentioned earlier. It's easy once you know how, and it's all happening here on Hall Pass. Don't get caught with that one. What I do to help them be better communicators is a lot of things from learning how to breathe correctly, to support the voice, to make it louder, which also helps them to be more confident with themselves. Posture, how to know how to pause and when to pause. Character, the core of our lives. Traits, the seeds of its core. What's a good trait that shows you can communicate well? Self-control. Self-control is knowing that what I say can have a positive impact on myself and others. Self-control is thinking before you speak or act. I make sure what I say or do is appropriate for the time and place. Self-control is watching what you say. What could be funny to you may offend others. Another way to show self-control is to think about how you want to say something, which makes it easier for everything to come out the way you meant it to. Today, we're talking about talking, and our experts are giving us tips on how to improve our speaking skills. Later, we're gonna talk about overcoming stage fright and give you some ideas that really do help. But first, let's look at some of the common mistakes we make and how to overcome them, starting with the importance of speaking clearly. A lot of teenagers tend to mumble because they lack confidence in what they're saying. It's not necessarily that they want to do that or they don't have a mouthful of marbles, but what they do do is they're bashful or embarrassed. So I went to uh, California and I was snowboarding and um, I uh, went to the mountain with my dad and we unpacked the snowboard stuff and then we went to the mountain and we went there, we went to ride the snowboard. The more confidence you have as a communicator, the less likely you are to mumble because you want people to hear what you have to say. You don't want to conceal it or hide it. Ms. O'Brien has some advice on how we can learn to speak more clearly. Right now we're going to do our exercises to improve our articulation so when we speak we won't mumble. So we're going to begin our exercise with loosening the jaw. So if you will, just shake your jaw back and forth. Ready? And go. Just shake it, loosen it up. Good, now we're gonna take a deep breath and blow through the lips, ready? Now one more time. And a third time. Good, that gets your lips all ready to go. Our next exercise is to make sure that we're using our mouth and our tongue to speak clearly, so we're going to do the exercise. Ready, and diction is done with the tip of the tongue and the teeth. One more time. Diction is done with the tip of the tongue and the teeth. And again, diction is done with the tip of the tongue and the teeth. Excellent, great. Another good tip would be to read out loud. Whatever it is, utilize the text that's on the paper, read out loud, do it to an audio, audio visual piece of equipment as a video camera or just a tape recording. Some way in which you can not only say it, but then listen how you say it so that when someone says to you, you know you mumble, you know you don't say these words properly, and you'll say, no I don't. Well, here's living proof. Here's another idea on how to avoid mumbling. Lose the gum. If I was going to speak, whether it be in school, with my friends, family members, and want someone to understand what I'm saying, I definitely would not have anything in my mouth that would hinder that. So, one time, I went, and my mom, 
she surprised me. And we went to um, a concert, and it was really cool. Vincent's demonstrating something else we should avoid when speaking. He goes up at the end of every thought like this, making everything he says sound like a question. <laughs> Another common mistake that can be hard on your listener is not projecting your voice. When you project your voice in a clear, confident way, like I'm doing right now, you transmit intelligence and sureness in yourself.